April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and it might be a difficult topic, but it's also a very important topic to discuss with your kids and also us all right here. I'm here with Dr. Hansen. She's going to join me today. We're going to talk about some tips on just how to cover this topic with your kids. Well, welcome back. So when it comes to sexual abuse, mm -hmm. um, you know, we were kind of chatting a little bit before. It's really important you as a parent that you really empower your children yes. to know their own body. Right. As you said, this is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and one of the biggest tools you have at your, at your disposal as a parent is how you empower your kids to uh, not only protect their bodies, but to alert others if something bad is happening to them. So what does that really entail when yeah. it comes to empowering them, like knowing their body parts, but mm -hmm. maybe calling it by what it's really supposed to be called? Right. You know, I think first and foremost, teaching your child what are the private parts of their body. You know, I think as parents, we think about genitals as being the most obvious one, but that also includes breasts, buttocks, and even mouth. Using anatomical terms as much as possible so that your child can correctly identify and report uh, if something bad is happening to them so that the adult who's hearing them knows what they're talking about. If we can just kind of skip up a little bit and more talk about teenagers who, yeah. you know, in my eyes, they're, they're still children. Mm -hmm. I feel that a lot of times they get put in positions where they're, you know, I, this is just the facts. You know, mm -hmm. high schoolers, they go to parties sometimes mm -hmm. and sometimes bad situations like happen. Mm -hmm. I feel, and what is your thoughts, because obviously you're the expert here, you're the doctor, is talking to your teen about, say, some sort of, cri some sort of bad, uh, you know, I guess we can go out and say it, say rape happens, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. What do you do in that situation? Right. Well, hopefully you've been laying the groundwork with your child since toddlerhood about this mm -hmm. and really helping them know that um, that their body is theirs and that it's not okay for other mm -hmm. people to hurt or harm their body in any way. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully your teen feels comfortable to coming to you and telling you if something bad happens. But there's a lot of shame and guilt that's associated with those situations. And you could understand how it'd be very uncomfortable for a teen to talk about that. Um, we really focus on with young kids talking about safe and unsafe situations versus good and bad because that takes some of that guilt and shame away. Uh, and just, you know, I think maintaining that connection with your teen can help ensure that they feel comfortable coming to you. All right, well, just a disclaimer. So I actually took a, a sexual assault uh, education class with law enforcement. I was actually an advocate. I went out there on scenes of crisis and I would speak to the victims and I was kind of like that buffer between law enforcement and you know the victims. Mm -hmm. And one important tip, and I really think it's important, I definitely want you to share what you have to say because you are the expert yeah. here, is that don't take a shower. I know that that sounds so simple, but if you're gonna have to go there and do that rape kit, and I feel like those are the kind of conversations that you should have with your children and, and adults about is just you know not taking a shower so that they can collect that evidence. Because you're talking about sexual abuse, I mean, there's little things like that that sometimes it's just so uncomfortable to talk about, but it, it really does need to be said. I think for older kids, really, you know, it's important as their knowledge base expands, as their experience expands, for you to continue to be that source of wisdom and yes. guidance for them. And, you know, not, not only that example that you shared, but just talking about, you know, if you're at a party, what are some ways to keep yourself safe? Yes. Um, if you're with people you don't know well, what are, what are some ways to help protect yourself? And I think that's, that's really important. You're your child's guide, mm -hmm. um, really you are, and you help them learn the things they can do to be a healthy, well-adjusted, successful adult. That's a hope, right? Absolutely, yeah. and then just having you know that parent-child relationship with their doctor, how mm -hmm. is it a good conversation just to facilitate and mm -hmm. you know talk about these uncomfortable topics? I mean, it is, I mean, yeah. this is, these are very uncomfortable topics that people do not wanna say. <laughs> you know, as a, as a pediatrician, one of the things I strive for with even really young kids is, is really having them participate in their own medical care. I want them to not only feel comfortable talking to their parent about their body, but they should view me as one of their trusted adults that they can come to if they have questions or concerns. And so you'll hear me during a checkup using those anatomical names. You'll hear me asking for consent from the patient to examine those mm -hmm. parts of their body that might be more uncomfortable or awkward for them. And then really working to kind of solicit their, um, their questions and just helping them feel comfortable in that setting. Absolutely. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you for getting a little bit uncomfortable today here <laughs> on the show. And I always appreciate you coming mm -hmm. back here. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Well, we have more to come here on North Dakota today. Up next, we are going to be having just a little bit of fun with some of our favorite Easter activities.